everybody from YouTube. I just got back from vacation down at the Outer Banks, and I decided this year that I was, uh, instead of focusing on drum fishing and, and trout fishing, I decided to go after sheep's head around the bridges. And in particular, I fished the uh, Man's Harbor Bridge off of Roanoke Island, and I did really well there. I caught a lot of really nice sized uh, sheep's head. This is the first time I'm actually fishing uh, bridges out of a kayak. So I learned a bunch, but I had a lot of success. First half of this video is gonna be tips, techniques, casting strategies, the bait, all of that stuff in terms of what worked for me fishing out of a kayak uh, at, at Man's Harbor Bridge. And then the second half of the video is gonna be obviously me out there fishing. So uh, anyways, hope you get a lot of good information out of this. And uh, feel free to comment and feel free to subscribe if you find this channel valuable. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, let's get started. So like I said, I, uh, I spent two weeks down on the Outer Banks and I, I did a lot of fishing at the Man's Harbor Bridge, which is right off of Roanoke Island. Now, according to locals, there are two bridges that produce the best sheep's head in the Outer Banks. One of them is the Oregon Inlet Bridge and the other one is the Man's Harbor Bridge. Now, I opted not to do the Oregon Inlet Bridge simply because of uh, the, the currents there are extremely strong and the boat traffic is pretty significant, so you really have to be on your toes. So I decided to kind of ease my way into a kayak uh, bridge fishing with the Man's Harbor Bridge, and it's, it absolutely paid off. And uh, so um, let's talk about the bridge itself. The bridge itself is about 2.7 miles long, and uh, there are, are a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pilings for you to fish from a kayak there, which makes it great. Now there's an east end and there is a west end. Uh, you can launch kayaks from, from either, either side. Now, a lot of folks ask me, hey, which side is best? It just depends which way the winds are blowing, right? So if the winds are blowing out of the east, you want to launch from the east. If it's blowing from the west, you want to launch, launch from the west. And, you know, if the winds are really, really blowing really hard, you'll notice a significant difference uh, in one end versus the other. Uh, so the, the other thing I'll say about this is that kayak fishing on this bridge gives you a distinct advantage. Right, because regular boats, I mean, when they come up on these bridges, they have to stop, they have to anchor, they can't really get underneath the bridge because it gets too rough, banging into the pilings. And so, you know, they fish a set of pilings and then if they want to go to another set, they have to pull up anchor and then they have to start the motor and all of that, right? But with a kayak, you can, you can cover a lot of area really super fast. And uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, regarding the, the equipment, uh, the bait, and the target fish, okay, first off, uh, you're going to need a kayak with pedals. Uh, regular paddles uh, isn't going to work here. And the, and the reason for that is, is when you stop paddling, you're going to be 50 to 100 yards from that bridge pretty quickly, given the strength of the uh, current. So you definitely want a kayak with pedals. Uh, make sure that you wear a, uh, a life jacket uh, you know, because uh, it does get a little dicey out there, um, you know, with the current and, and the waves and, uh, and uh, all of that stuff. You want to make sure you stay safe. Also take a portable uh, marine radio with you just in case you have an equipment malfunction or a medical emergency. Uh, or, God forbid, you fall out of the kayak. Uh, you know, you, you just want to make sure that somebody can come and, and, and help you out if you get yourself in trouble. Also, make sure to keep yourself visible. This is really important, right? Because you got boats that are going to come up on these bridges and go through these bridges, and you want to make sure you stay visible. Now, I don't use the Hobie flag, safety flag. It, I think it's too small and, and it gets faded over time. So I decided just to get a, a fluorescent orange hunting cap. And uh, that really uh, stuck out. And I could tell boats would, would see me from a ways off and, and they gave me plenty of leeway when they were going underneath the bridges, which, which I really appreciated. But as far as the equipment's concerned, um, you know, I would get yourself a seven foot uh, stiff uh, rod with, with a you know, spinning rod with a spinning reel. And the reason you want it stiff is because these fish hit really light. I mean, you may get a tick and a tick tick and that's about all you're gonna get uh, in terms of a hit. So you want a stiff, stiff rod, 10 pound test line is fine. Uh, sheep's head rig, there's different sheep's head rigs that you can use. The one I used was a, a standard one you see up in the picture here. It's basically just a, a, a weight. Uh, one end of the weight in the eyelet is the hook. The other um, eyelet is where you tie your, uh, your fishing line. Uh, I opted not for bigger, heavier rigs simply because I want to feel what the what the fish is doing. 
Um, there's two kinds of uh, baits you can use, right? You can use sand fleas or you can use filler crabs are the two most common ones that you can use. Uh, sand fleas, you can actually get them off the beach. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there on how to get sand fleas off the beach. I like doing that because it's a fun thing uh, for my son and I to do and it's free. Uh, now, also, you can get them freeze-dried and vacuum-sealed uh, in the bait shops as well. Those are, those work just as good. Uh, fiddler crabs, I didn't go down that route. I don't feel like messing with fiddler crabs, to be honest with you. So I just stuck with the sand fleas, but fiddler crabs do work really well. Um, now, let's talk about hookup percentage. I would have one hookup for every 10 sand fleas that I would put on the hook. And th this is this is a challenging fish to catch. And um, so you're going to burn up a lot of bait your hookup percentage might be better than mine, but it was about 10 to one for me. Uh, the reason they're challenging to catch is because if you look at their teeth, their teeth uh, look like human teeth. In fact, they have rows of molars of teeth and they have very powerful jaws and, and it's designed to snap at uh, crustaceans and to be able to crush the shells um, in a split second, right? So these sheep's head will come up on your bait and they will snap at that bait quickly. And that's where you feel that tick or that tick tick. And, uh, and, and that's it, right? You either need to set the hook uh, or your bait's gonna be gone, right? So they can be really challenging to catch, um, but they typically feed on crustaceans, shellfish, uh, you know, barnacles that are on uh, the edge of, uh, of ships or on the edge of, um, edge of these bridge pilings. Um, and just as a reminder, in North Carolina, in the Outer Banks, the uh, minimum length is, um, 10 inches, and that is fork length, or what they call FL. So you want to make sure you take a, a measuring device uh, with you when you go down there. Okay, so let's um, let's talk about strategies on positioning your kayak, right? So what worked for me is, is you're going to want to have the current and the wind in your face. Uh, now, most times the, the wind and the current are going the same direction. Sometimes, the, once in a while, it's not the case, but most times it is. So you want the kayak facing the current and facing the, the wind. And the reason for that is you're going to have a lot more control over your kayak um, if, if you do it that way versus trying to control the kayak when the wind is pushing you from behind. Um, also, it's going to give you a lot better casting accuracy and control in, tr in terms of dropping your bait. And, uh, and also the presentation of the bait itself is gonna be a lot easier if you're facing the current and the wind. And the other thing also, to, it, it, allow, it allow you to avoid snags, right? Because you gotta be careful not to get your, uh, get your line uh, wrapped up around, the, uh, around these pilings. Now, the fish are very much like us, right? They don't wanna fight the current, <laughs> right? So a lot of times the best place to fish is gonna be on the side of the piling that is on the opposite side of where the current is coming run, coming from, right? Because that's where the, the, the water is the calmest and a lot of the, uh, a lot of the sheep's head will hang out on that side of the, the piling. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're, uh, when you're fishing out there. Um, now, as far as best practices on catching the sheep's head, this is what, this is what worked for me. Um, so there's your diagram, right? Wind direction and current is in your face. Um, the, the two basic options that I used uh, to, to catch these sheep's head, you, you see below, right? So option A is where you basically would cast um, or drop your, uh, drop your uh, bait um, down by the pylon itself, right? You want it to hit the bottom and then you want to reel it up a little bit, right? Reel it up a little bit, up, up a couple inches, maybe 12 inches at the most, right? And then, and then just be ready uh, to, to feel that tick or that tick tick. Uh, on the line. And uh, the second option uh, that you can use is, uh, that I used, is basically to cast, um, you know, cast your bait out to the furthest piling, uh, to the right of it. And once again, make sure that it's not drifting into the piling, right? Because it's going to get wrapped around that stuff, but it's by the piling. Let it drift by those pilings, right? And, and keep the slack tight, right? You don't want any slack in the line, but keep it tight and let it drift back to you. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll hit it when it's passing the uh, passing the piling. Now you are also are gonna catch uh, black drum uh, this way. You're also gonna catch uh, trout this way. I caught a, a couple of nice trout and I caught a huge black drum this way. But that's the that's the two uh, techniques that I use that, that produced uh, for me. Um, now once again, the, the hit you're gonna feel is gonna be very light. It's gonna be just a single tick or, or two ticks in a row. And, and those ticks that you're feeling is when they're smashing up that that sand flea and, and devouring it. 
Uh, so as soon as you feel that tick, you are gonna wanna set that hook and set it hard. Their, their mouths are really hard. You're gonna wanna set that hook really quick. Like I said, you're gonna miss a lot. That's part of the fun of this. You're gonna miss a lot of these. Uh, but, uh, but when you do hook up, uh, it's gonna be great. Now, the thing is that tick, that tick could be a small sheep's head. That tick could be a monster sheep's head. Once again, that's what I felt was really the fun part about catching these sheep's head. Um, the other thing too is like, you know, give the, each piling a little bit of time, but don't linger, right? Don't spend a huge amount of time at each set of pilings. You just, just simply move on down to the next set of pilings, right? And that's what's great about uh, fishing uh, from, from a kayak on these bridge pilings because you can cover a lot, of, uh, a lot of distance really, really fast. So anyways, that's it. Uh, let's um, check out the action. Okay, everybody, you can see um, you can see what I'm doing here. I got the current and the wind in my face, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this um, drop this sand flea basically right against the piling. Right now, I'm I'm working the pedals pretty hard here because I got a pretty pretty uh, pretty hefty uh, current and, and headwind, but I'm letting it drop down to the bottom, and then I'm gonna reel it up a couple of inches. Okay, and then I'm gonna wait. Now it's it's gonna drift away from the piling just a little bit here, and that's when the strike comes. I had to set the hook really quickly there, but I've got I've got probably the biggest sheep set on that I've that I've had all week. Uh, but I also have my line wrapped around the underneath part of my reel, <laughs> so I had to I had to play around with with that a little bit. Now I, I once again I don't I don't know what I have on here. Um, this is the first sheep set that I caught uh, for the whole week, and, uh, and actually I'm just kind of fighting with him a little bit. He's taking line off and trying to get him up to the uh, get him up to the surface, and you can see that is a really really nice size sheep set. Um, now. What you'll also notice is you can see how far I have drifted from the bridge, right? I mean, within literally, you know, within half a minute, I'm already 50 yards from uh, from the bridge. I mean, that's how the strong the current is, right? That's why having a kayak with pedals is really important. But that was uh, that was the first sheep said. That was a really nice one, definitely a keeper, and uh, it was a great way to start the week. Okay, um, right, so once again, you know, um, you want to make sure you're visible out there, keep an eye on the boat traffic, right? So I got a boat that passed in front of me here, 
he's going to send some waves my direction and then once again just you know you have to have situational awareness out there because you don't want those waves to kind of pick you up and throw you up against one of the pilings so you just have to kind of keep the right orientation but um but like i said working the pedals now i'm basically working the uh Working the edge of the pilings and the second piling in, looks like I've got another sheep's head on. Uh, another keeper. You know, keepers are, once again, anything over 10 inches, uh, fork length is, is a keeper in North Carolina. These are definitely over uh, 10 inches. So, another nice, uh, another nice sheep's head on the, uh, on the sand flake. Okay, so here I'm working the outside edge of the piling, and you know, like I said, you really got to set the hook on these uh, these sheep's head because their mouths are so hard. And so I actually hooked up a really nice sheep's head here, and, uh, and but I didn't I didn't really set the hook hard enough, and uh, unfortunately this one uh, this one got away. Uh, the other thing you don't see here is the amount of bait that I burned through. You know, I've had a lot of uh, hook sets that uh, didn't end up in fish, right? My hookup ratio was 10, 10 sand fleas for every one hookup, so. Oh, that was a nice one, but anyways. That's what happens when you'll set the hook. Okay, this is, um, this is actually on the east end of the Man Harbor Bridge. Um, a couple days I launched from the west end, but the east end, and the reason I'm launching from the east end is it looks really calm here. Uh, but the other end of this bridge is absolutely insane. It was very windy that day. Winds were coming out of the east, but the west end of the bridge had huge white caps on it, and it was almost impossible to launch. So I just turned the truck around, drove back across the bridge down to the east end, and it was uh, a much more pleasant experience. So something you're going to want to keep aware of when you get out there. This is uh, this is the same day, and, and you can see that the winds actually calmed down a little bit, and so I was able to start getting underneath the bridge and, and start working um, inside the piling. So I was using basically uh, floating the the sand flea. You know, I throw it out to a piling, let it drift back to me in the open area there. And what I connected up on here uh, really surprised me. This is a really really large. Uh, black drum. This is probably the, this is definitely the biggest black drum that I've ever caught. You know, you know when you fish bridges, uh, the fish are fish are bigger usually, and there's there's no doubt about it. And this is a really large uh, uh, black drum, uh, and he's actually pulling the kayak. <laughs> he's pulling the kayak against the current, and uh, it really gave me a run for my money. And uh, I just I just had a lot of fun uh, fighting fighting him, bringing him into the boat, but. Um, uh, this is this is part of the fun fishing the bridges, right? So you'll catch black drum, you'll catch um, cheap set obviously, and you, you also catch some nice sized trout as well. Um, and believe it or not, there is actually some catfish in there as well. So you can see uh, you can see just the uh, the size of this this black drum, and uh, it's really cool.
big boy. That is big boy. That was cool. Oh my god, this is so cool. Oh, look at him. Oh my heavens. Black drum. What a beauty. Okay, folks, that's it. Thanks for watching. I had a fantastic week down there fishing, uh, actually, two weeks fishing down in the Outer Banks at uh, Man's Harbor. Caught a bunch of sheep's head, caught uh, trout, caught the big drum, and it was a lot of fun. But hey, one thing I wanted to let you know about before. You leave is um, if you're interested in keeping the fish. Uh, once again, make sure that they, uh, you know, you know the minimum lengths. But you can take them to Wanchi's Harbor, and Wanchi's Harbor has a, uh, a service there where they they'll fillet your fish, uh, and you can take it right over to the landing uh, restaurant that's right there in the marina, and they will cook it up for you. And there is absolutely nothing like fre fresh fish like that. It was fantastic. So something to keep in mind if you want to keep the fish and you want to invite your uh, family to have a uh, fish dinner with you. Okay, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like what you see here, feel free to subscribe.